nodes, peewee, and junk. How might a differentiating cell know which RNA is self, other? Will I be a neuron, a muscle cell? What RNA here is junk? Okay, I hypothesize that different cell types have different RNA networks defined by unique RNA Pol2 pauses or nodes. So then what might cause an RNA Pol2 to pause and become a node during cell differentiation? In a germ cell, the answer is pi RNA, but let me take you there. As we dive through the tangles of coiled nucleosomes and DNA, we approach a region of transcriptional activity. Here is a place in the nucleus where the local environment of proteins and ions has relaxed the chromatin structure. At a transcription start site, for example, DNA wraps loosely around nucleosomes whose histone tails have been modified in this case by a cloud of DNA-bound activating proteins. These nucleosomes roll and DNA unspools. RNA Pol2 begins RNA synthesis. Suddenly, they hit a blockade of stalled nucleosomes. Elongation stops. Two things are missing. The activating protein PTEFB and activated rolling nucleosomes. This is the point in my model where nascent RNAs are released like unique little flags. But again, why specifically here? Standard epigenetics. An RNA-guided argonaut protein and its transcription silencing complex has methylated a CPG island or the local histones in such a way as these nucleosomes will not roll. And these exact nucleosomes have been chosen because another, perhaps distant, gene has expressed RNA of homologous sequence and primed an argonaut. It is part of an active RNA network. Can this barrier be changed? In an environment containing transcriptional activators easily. The distant gene stops expressing homologous RNA. The local environment is generally activated. And when the argonauts dissipate, now this exact spot has been turned on. How now does this model suggest a mechanism by which a germ cell differentiates? Amazingly, in germ cells, almost all the nucleosomes are loose and rolling due to hypomethylation of the histones. DNA that has been hidden in coils is now revealed, and novel RNA is being made. Enter Peewee Argonaut and its pi RNA guides that predominate in germ cells. Dogma has it that pi RNAs exist solely to silence transposons and their selfish, foreign, mutagenic remnants, such as allo repeats. But oddly, transposons and their remnants make up almost half of the human genome, and their sequences and loci are mostly conserved. Almost half. Perhaps these remnants are performing some valuable function. Transposable elements, or TEs, are jumping genes that, importantly, can bind RNA polymerases. They are actually jumping transcription on-off signals. Over the last 600 million years, these jumping on-off signals have been contributing to the development of new RNA Pol2 pause points, new nodes in RNA networks, and ultimately to new cell types and new species. In early embryonic cells and developing germ cells like this one, 
TEs are not just mutagenic hooligans and junk. They're flagging the presence of something worth conserving. Perhaps it's the transcription on-off signals of recently evolved networks, the motherboards of the new cell types. To return to being a basic dividing cell, there's global demethylation and TE remnant release so that all this newly evolved DNA can be easily identified by pyRNAs and then silenced and finally hypercoiled, leaving behind the ancient, truly primordial DNA. Now we can take the last remarkable step. How might a mother cell transfer information? Well, differentially. Cytoplasmic pi RNAs and endo SI RNAs are the set of epigenetic instructions that get passed from mother cells to daughter cells. With this model, the sequestration of cytoplasmic guide RNAs into one or another pole of an oocyte, as seen in the cytoplasmic nuage bodies in Drosophila eggs, contributes to this process. Specific operating instructions that are differentially passed on. Thus, a complex organism is built from a single set of instructions. Ciao, Bella. Through the eons, with mutation, genetic drift, and the dynamic action of jumping transposable elements, common ancestry has evolved distinct species. Now, imagine combining these elements with the power of protein feedback loops and the specificity of an RNA-guided, RNA-targeting network. Then, the astonishing diversity of life evolving from just four nucleic acids seems like a perfectly reasonable possibility.